What's up guys? Today we're going over the Dawning Sword, the Zephyr, which is the first stasis sword in the game, and joining the Reed's Regret as one of the two stasis power weapons in the game. And in this video, we will be going over all of its different perks, going over which rules you need to get, and overall just going over if it's worth getting and how good it is and where its use cases are. So jumping straight into the right column perks, we have a new perk, Cold Steel, along with Robin Blade and Harmony. Those are the three I want to talk about. So starting off with the new perk, Cold Steel, what this one does is Powered Sword Hits Slow Targets. So looking at that in the game, it's pretty straightforward. On lower health enemies, you won't see them actually be slowed, but as you'll see later in the video, they are being slowed as they die. But if you jump over to a higher health target, for example, a Major Ultra, you can obviously see them being slowed and it's working as expected. Then on the super high health targets, for example, bosses, if you hit them multiple times, if you slow an already slowed enemy, they should freeze. And that does work with the sword. There is a cooldown of how often the sword can slow the same target. So it's not going to be like hitting them twice will instantly freeze them. There is a pretty long delay between actually freezing them. So for all the different aspects and fragments in the game that require you to slow a target or defeat a slow target, this will work with them as expected. And even on the red bars, when you don't even see them get slowed, it does count as you see it's proccing Grim Harvest and giving me part of my class ability back. But then for all the different aspects and fragments that have you freeze a target or kill a frozen target, pretty much just forget about it. It will never work in almost any situation only on long boss fights, which isn't where you're looking for a stasis build just for a single boss. That's not really like the point of the stasis fragments. So you can use the sword for stasis builds for slowing, but honestly, giving up your power weapon slot, which is such a huge part of the DPS meta right now, I just don't think is worthwhile when you can do the same thing with all of your abilities or even something like the scepter in your connect slot, which is going to be just way better overall. There is one weird fragment I found that works with this, which is going to be this one right here. Hitting a target with your stasis melee will reload your stowed weapons. And if you have no ammo in your sword, it counts as a stasis melee. So that does work, which is pretty interesting. And there is a cooldown, so I don't know how useful that is, but it's just something to keep in mind. Also in the right column, we have Harmony, which will be one of the best perks for just general gameplay. Go around with, you know, your primary, your special, whatever it is. Then whenever you get to a higher level target, you'll have that 20% buff ready to go. This weapon also has Robo and Blade, which did get nerfed, but it's going to be the best overall DPS perk, resulting in roughly like upper 40,000 DPS. And then moving on to the left column, there's going to be three perks once again I want to talk about. Tyrus Blade will be the best to pair with Cold Steel, because you'll be using the weapon for ad clear mostly, and that way you'll get half of your ammo back, and over long run it'll more than double your ammo. Traditionally, Relentless Strikes would be the best to pair with Rowind, but I think Duelist Trance is better now to be able to do your heavy attack more often for boss DPS. So overall, the two roles I'd go for on this weapon is Duelist Trance and Whirlwind Blade for those boss fights. And the other one I'd be going for is going to be Tireless and Cold Steel to work with those different stasis builds. So where do I actually see this sword being used in the game? Well, first, it's going to be a good thing to pair with stasis builds. That way you can still take advantage of Phantom Might because it's one of two stasis power weapons in the game right now along with Reed's Regret. So if you're using a build, for example, the Scepter or the Peace Bond, whatever stasis primary, and you're getting a bunch of kills, proccing Phantom Might, using something like Harmony on the sword would work really well. Whenever you get to a major, a boss, whatever it is, you would have that 20% buff along with the 25% of Phantom Might. So with how important matching all of your elements are for your builds right now with all the elemental wells, that is one of the use cases I see for the sword. And the R1 this season is with Cold Still, where you can slow or freeze the targets, and that'll pair nicely with Focusing Lens from the Artifact, which is where your light abilities will do bonus damage to combatants affected by stasis. And this will be one of the easiest ways to do it completely by yourself. So looking at Carl, our Nova Bomb usually hits for 110,000 on the impact, but now we go ahead and use Cold Still and slow Carl, throw Nova again, we'll get Focusing Lens, which will be a 25% increase to our light ability damage. And we can also pair that with Divinity to get our own debuff. And this is going to result in more or less the highest burst DPS you can do completely by yourself, adding in a 30% debuff. And obviously this works really good with Thunder Crash on Titan and will absolutely just destroy every boss in the game. Outside of some of the one-two punch combos, more or less the highest DPS you can do completely by yourself. You could also pair this with things like Chaos Reach or the new and improved recently buffed Middle Tree Voidwalker for your handheld Supernova or even something like Blade Barrage on Hunter. 
pretty much any good light ability. So overall, the Zephyr definitely isn't useless. With Cold Steel, it works really well with focusing lens. You could use it to activate different stasis builds, but I think using your abilities or just something like the Scepter is going to be better off. That way you don't have to give up your power weapon slot, which is by far the DPS meta right now with things like rockets and the linear fusion rifles. And you can also use it for Phantom Might while using a stasis build. So overall, it's definitely worth getting and keeping those two roles I mentioned. But I don't think it's anything game changing or, you know, something you have to get right now and put it on and never take it off. I think there are better swords and better ways to do stasis builds. In this video, I also want to quickly go over the other two dawning weapons because I don't think they're going to get their own video. So first with the cold front, which is a 750 RPM SMG. On the left, you can get subsistence or something like perpetual motion. On the right, I would go for Rampage, Surrounded, or even One for All. All three would be really good. And then with the Avalanche, which is going to be a 450 RPM machine gun. Once again, in the left, I would go for Subsistence or even Outlaw. Then the right, I would go for Adrenaline Junkie or Dragonfly. Or you can even do something like Swashbuckler. So overall, all four of the Donnie weapons are really good and have really good perks. So they're definitely worth farming and getting all the different roles I mentioned so far for all four of them. And once again, just kind of summing up the Zephyr, just the fact that it stasis alone makes it worthwhile to get, just because of the way all the Elemental Well mods work right now and how important it is to match up all your different weapons to your subclass. So for stasis builds, it is really good, just given the fact that I can take advantage of Phantom Might. But in terms of Cold still being a great way to take advantage of stasis builds, I'm not quite sure if that is true or not. I think with the right ability build or even using just something like the Scepter or a P-Spawn, IS Luna, whatever it is, I think all those are better and don't require you to give up your power weapon slot. So in my opinion, it's definitely nothing game changing, but overall still a pretty good sword. And yeah, I think that's going to be it for the video. Let me know what you think about the sword. The rest of the video will just be some strike gameplay with the Scepter and the Zephyr. Like usual, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.